Today's program focuses on helping older persons to move in a safe, comfortable manner. Older residents are at high risk for injuries or falls during the movement process. Residents with dementia are at particular risk because they may forget how to use their cane, their walker, their wheelchair, or they may simply no longer be able to follow the instructions provided by the staff. Today's program focuses on helping staff move residents in a safe, compassionate manner. But to begin with, let's talk about the parts of the brain that are involved with standing and sitting. Residents with dementia often have trouble walking or moving between sitting and standing positions. Some even have trouble getting themselves into a comfortable position once they're sitting or lying down. Residents need your help to move safely and comfortably. Different residents have different needs. Some residents only need your guidance and supervision. Other residents need you to help them physically. Some residents even need more than one person to help them move. If residents are not moved correctly, they may suffer several types of injuries. They may fall and break their bones. They may get bruises or skin tears. They may become frightened or distressed. If residents are not positioned correctly, they may develop bed sores or stiff limbs. They may lose muscle and they may be in great pain. It is very important to make sure that residents are moved and positioned correctly to ensure their safety, comfort, and health. Moving from the bed to a chair requires that the resident use many brain regions. Let's look at the parts of the brain that are involved with assisting a patient to get from the bed into a chair. First of all, in order for the resident to do what you ask, they must understand the instructions. The part of the brain that interprets spoken word is located here, right on top of the ear, in a part called the temporal lobe. Then a separate part of the brain tells the person how to stand and move into the chair. And finally, a part of the brain located right here, again on top of the ear, tells the person's arms and legs how to get up and move. Let's look at this in a bigger model. Here we see in the red area located in the temporal lobe, the part of the brain that listens to the instructions, interprets it, and understands that they need to stand up. The purple area right here in the parietal lobe tells the person's arms and legs how to move from the bed to the chair. And finally, in the striped area right here are the brain cells that tell the arms and the legs actually to move. Let's see what happens in a resident with Alzheimer's disease. Here we see two brains, one from a normal resident the other from a resident with Alzheimer's disease. Notice that the Alzheimer brain is shrunken. Now let's look at the specific brain areas that are actually reduced in volume. Here is the part of the brain that tells your arms and legs what to do. Here is the part of the brain that tells them to actually move. Notice that in the Alzheimer brain, the part that tells them what to do is severely shrunken as in right here, as opposed to the brain regions that actually move the arms and the legs are not particularly damaged. Consequently, this person would continue to be able to move their arms and legs. Let's look at what this would appear as if we cut into the brain. Here is a section from a normal individual. Here is a section from a resident with Alzheimer's disease. Here is the part of the brain right here, the temporal lobe, that hears the instructions that you are giving. Notice how shrunken and atrophic it is in the Alzheimer resident. This individual would not understand your instru instructions on how to stand and how to move. This is the section from the parietal lobe of a normal individual that tells the individual how to get their arms and legs organized so that they can stand up and move. Notice how reduced it is in the Alzheimer patient. This individual, even though their arms and legs can move, 
normally would not know what to do with them once they got in motion. This is what happens in the resident with Alzheimer's disease. First of all, they may not understand your instructions. Then even if they understand the instructions, they may not remember how to stand or move, even though they can still move their arms and their legs. Many residents with dementia develop problems with standing, walking, and body positioning in the middle to late stages of the disease. Some demented residents have other physical problems that make it more difficult for them to walk or change positions. Low blood pressure may cause residents to become faint when they stand up. General weakness may make it harder for residents to carry their own weight. Strokes can also cause weakness or even cause residents to become partially paralyzed. Some residents may have osteoporosis, which causes bones to become softer and which may increase their risk for broken bones. Additionally, dementia may cause residents to struggle or resist you when you are trying to help them move. To safely move a resident, you must know the specific needs of the resident. You must know about any health problems that the resident may have. And you must know the resident's potential behavioral problems. When moving a resident from one place to another, you always make sure wherever you move them to is securely locked before you move them. And make sure you always use your lifting techniques if you have to move them from one place to another. You always bend your knees and use your knees and not your back when you're lifting them and you would lift them and turn with them and bend with them and sit them where you're going to move them to. Yeah, it's just a resident that don't want to help. You got some resident that will put all their weight on you and not want to help with the move and you got to know how to move them correctly in order to, for you not to hurt yourself or that resident. Never try to move a resident that's too big or that you need some help with, you always call in that extra help, someone to get on that opposite side to help you with the lift. Mrs. Jones has mid-stage Alzheimer's disease. She is about to get up from her chair to go to the dining room for dinner. She still has a lot of strength and she doesn't have any additional health problems that would make it difficult for her to get up. Still, Mrs. Jones needs your guidance and supervision to be safe and prevent falls. Check to see if her shoes are tied properly. Let's make sure your shoes are tied. Okay. Looks good. Make sure that any loose clothing is not caught on her chair. Help Mrs. Jones to position her walker correctly. Be sure to tell Mrs. Jones to push up from her chair. Now, Mrs. Jones, I need you to make sure that you're pushing up from your chair and don't pull on your walker. Watch her as she lifts herself to a standing position. Good. Continue to watch her and follow her as she heads toward the dining room. Mr. Smith has mid-stage dementia. You find him sitting in an awkward position. He looks very uncomfortable. He is a large man and he is too heavy for you to move on your own. Oh dear, Mr. Smith, you look so uncomfortable. I'm gonna go get someone to help me get you into a better position. Find a co-worker to help you move Mr. Smith. Greet Mr. Smith and tell him what you're going to do. Okay, we're gonna make sure your wheelchair is locked first. Make sure the chair is stable and won't slide away when you move Mr. Smith. Ask Mr. Smith to try to push up. Now I need you to help me push up with your arms and when you push up, we're gonna help move you into a better position. While Mr. Smith is pushing up, bend your knees and keep your back straight. Then lift him under his buttocks and back. By bending your knees, you use your legs and your whole body to lift Mr. Smith. You should never bend from the hips and use your back to lift any resident. Gently shift Mr. Smith into a comfortable position. If you ever need to shift a resident's position in bed, you don't even need to lift the resident. Instead, carefully roll the resident into a more comfortable position. This can also be safely accomplished by using a draw sheet. When helping a resident into a new position, you should never grab a resident's clothing or armpits. 
And you should never pull a resident by the arms or legs. You could frighten the resident or give the resident bruises or skin tears. Uh, you could hurt yourself, the hurt, hurt the resident, or you both could fall. So we try to watch and we have some that are prone to falling. So have to kind of be with them at times when they're making steps and try to make sure that they don't fall. Um, if uh, you're working with a resident with a stroke, depending on what side, you might have to kind of work with them on the other, well, on the other side and kind of just be careful with them. Mrs. Green has Alzheimer's disease. She also suffers from osteoporosis, or soft bone disease, and she is weak. As you prepare to move Mrs. Green from her wheelchair to another chair, you must remember that her osteoporosis puts her at greater risk for breaking her bones. Position the wheelchair next to the chair where Mrs. Green will be sitting. Mrs. Green, I'm going to help you get over into a chair. Ma'am? Don't forget to reassure Mrs. Green and tell her what you're going to do. I'm going to lock your wheelchair first. Lock the wheelchair and make sure the other chair is also stable. Now I'm going to move the footrest out of the way. Okay. Ask Mrs. Green to scoot to the edge of her chair. I need you to scoot to the edge of the chair for me. A gate belt can also be used in assisting or moving a resident. Okay, I'm going to put a belt around you so that I can help you stand up. Ask Mrs. Green to push up from her wheelchair. Now I need you to push up from the chair when we stand. Bend your knees. Use your legs and your whole body to lift her into a standing position. Do not lift with your back. Pivot, turn Mrs. Green so she is in front of the new chair. Okay, reach back for the chair. Gently lower her into the chair. You can use this same technique to move a resident from a wheelchair to a toilet. You may need to ask a co-worker to help you in the bathroom. Bathrooms are a very dangerous place for falls. Don't forget, you should never grab a resident's clothing or armpits. And you should never pull a resident by the arms or legs. You could frighten the resident or give the resident bruises or skin tears. Mr. Roberts has dementia. He also suffered a stroke last year leaving him very weak on his left side. He needs your help to get out of bed and into his wheelchair. As you prepare to move Mr. Roberts, you must remember that his left side needs extra support. Remember the first thing you need to do is to reassure the resident. Greet Mr. Roberts and tell him that you'll be helping him out of bed. I came in to help you get up into a chair, okay? Okay. I'm gonna lower your bed first. Okay. Adjust the height of the bed so that it is lower than your waist. Bring the wheelchair into position next to the bed on Mr. Roberts' strong right side. Lock the wheelchair in place. Okay, let's bring your legs off the bed first. Help Mr. Roberts into a sitting position on the bed. A gate belt can also be used in assisting or moving a resident. Okay, I'm gonna put my belt around you just for safety. Okay. Face him and position yourself so that his weak left leg is between your legs. Bend your knees and shift Mr. Roberts into a standing position using a rocking motion. Block his left foot with your feet to prevent it from sliding forward. Supporting his left side Pivot turn Mr. Roberts toward his wheelchair. Gently lower him into the chair by bending your knees. Residents fall for many reasons. They may be afraid or dizzy or just weak. When a resident begins falling, 
Don't try to prevent the fall. Guide the resident easily and safely to the floor, bending your knees, not your back. Stay calm and stay close to the resident. Mr. Roberts, it's okay. Somebody will be in to help us in just a minute. Okay. Try to keep the resident calm. Remember to get help from a coworker before you try to lift the resident from the floor. Go over these steps in your mind every time you move a resident. Mr. Smith has Alzheimer's disease. He tells you that he is uncomfortable in his chair. You notice that his blanket is knotted up underneath him. You can't help him change position because he weighs 300 pounds. What can you do? Leave him. There's nothing you can do. Ask a coworker to help you move Mr. Smith. Grab his arm and pull him forward while you pull out the blanket. Go help another resident who's not too big for you. Miss Jackson has mild dementia. She also had a stroke and she is weak on her left side. She usually stays in her wheelchair and she needs help moving from her bed to the chair. What is the best way for you to help her? Grab her by the armpit. Drag Miss Jackson by her arm. Make sure Miss Jackson's chair is in position. Bring her to a sitting position. Face her, bend your knees. Supporting her left side, move her to a standing position and pivot. Slowly and gently lower Miss Jackson into the wheelchair. Pull her up by her clothes. Mr. Nelson suffers from Alzheimer's disease. He gets more confused than usual around bedtime. You find him lying in an awkward position in his bed. What can you do to help Mr. Nelson? Carefully roll Mr. Nelson to a more comfortable position. Get a coworker to help you pull him up by his armpits. Grab his arm and pull him into the proper position. Any of the above will work. Ms. Mitchell suffers from Alzheimer's disease and has mild dementia. She suffered a stroke two years ago and her left side is paralyzed. She tells you that she needs to use the bathroom. What can you do to help Ms. Mitchell move from her wheelchair to the toilet? Make sure her wheelchair is locked in position while you help her move. Help Ms. Mitchell pivot on her right leg while you support her paralyzed left side. Ask a coworker to help you. Bathrooms are dangerous places for falls. All of the above will help to keep Ms. Mitchell safe. Ms. Miller has mild dementia and low blood pressure. Sometimes she gets dizzy when she stands up. While you're helping her out of her chair, she begins to fall. What can you do to help her? Let her go, there's nothing you can do. Gently guide her to the floor, bending your knees, and try to keep her calm. Scream loudly for help. Grab her arm and try to pull her up. <laughs> 